Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, welcome to Integral 11. Now, I gotta be honest, this is an operating system I was kind of dreading checking out just because of the Integral XP experience that I had with the other system, from a security perspective anyway. From a functionality standpoint, I didn't really see any bonus to running it or benefit to running it, but we're in much of the same boat with this operating system. Maybe somebody down below could add a comment down below as to why this operating system exists. But I don't want to go off on a tangent here and make it look like I don't like this particular operating system. Um, from a development standpoint, from the integral side. I actually do understand its point and its purpose. Specifically what it's designed for, at least from what I can tell, is that if you have a 7th gen i9 processor, that's what this operating system is for. Otherwise, I don't see a point in it at all. It just shouldn't exist. So what this operating system brings to the table is it gives you the ability to run Windows 11 on older hardware. So it doesn't require, you know, your trusted platform module. It doesn't have the 8 gigs of memory requirement. Don't need 52 gigs of drive space. It doesn't check during the installation processor uh, process if you have an 8th gen processor running. And it will support the MBR or the legacy BIOS configurations. So on paper, all of those things are perfectly normal. It's an operating system that's designed to run on all platforms, assuming you have a license. So you'll still have to purchase a Microsoft Windows 11 license to run it. But one of the downsides to this operating system is, is not because of Integral. It has nothing to do with Integral. It just has to do with the fact that it's extremely heavy and bloated. So even on later hardware, it struggles. So installing it on you know, a 12th gen processor with 16 gigs of memory and an NVMe drive, it's still a boat anchor. So I can't even imagine running it on a 5th gen i5 with DDR3 memory and maybe 16 gigs, but probably more like 4 gigs of memory and then a 5400 RPM drive. I, I can't understand what the point of this operating system is. So then I started looking at the processor revisions throughout the years. And I've came to the conclusion that it may work and it may dis be designed for people that are running something that was just before the cutoff like say a 7th gen i9 processor. This operating system should run absolutely fine on a 7th gen i9 processor, but technically it doesn't support a 7th gen i9 processor. So I even went into another step on this particular system and I, I dug into the registry on this system. And the reason why is because I thought for sure maybe we had something installed on here that was outside of the norm um, as far as a configuration. Maybe there's a performance tweak on here I just don't see in the GUI. And the reality is is that there's not. The only thing I see in here is we have a codec pack for our Windows Media Player. We have Google Chrome uh, configuration installation stuff in here. We have 7-zip. We have OpenSSH and you know the VMware which is something I installed. And that's really it. So then I started thinking, all right, well, maybe there's a firewall config in here. And the truth of the matter is, is there's not. Now I have the firewall turned off because as we're sitting here, I am scanning the system. And as I'm scanning the system, it is on my internal LAN and it has no internet access. And I have three cores allocated to this particular system to try to get a little more stuff so it's not so slow. I'm still using two gigs of memory at idle just to run the actual system. So if you've got four gigs of memory on DDR3 and you're gonna try to run this thing, I wouldn't even bother. So then I started thinking, well, maybe we have package installers on here. And we do have some package in installers on here. If I go into programs and uninstall a program, we could see what we have installed on here. The thing to keep in mind is that none of the stuff that's on here is not stuff that you can't just download yourself. I mean, the reality is, is that most of the stuff is going to come from Windows updates. Um, the vast majority of this stuff is going to be from the theme configuration or the web view. Um, we have an open hash tab, which gives you the ability to view the uh, SHA information for the actual files and the applications. That's cool, but I mean, that's 55, seven megs. The installation of this actual operating system is 6.5 gigs. So it's huge and it's slow. And it's, it's actually slower than just your out of the box Windows 11 install because of the additional package that exists in it. 
So being that we're running this on a 10th gen, which I understand is not the newest processor, right? If I had a 14th gen, this would probably be a lot faster. And quite frankly, I'd probably just run a 13th gen because of the transition process that has taken place between a removal of the 16-bit application um, support in the 14th gen versus the 13th gen, which would make my 13th gen slower for Windows 11. But I would still be able to run my older applications and my older older configurations, which, in my opinion, at this point, is still worth it until we get probably into the 17th or 18th gen processor, in which case then I could see switching into that configuration versus the 16-bit kill off because that 16-bit kill off has been around since you know your pentium one or even before that so i mean your 46 sx or dx processors so we probably have 30 years of that existing inside of a processor and the 14th gen removes it so only god knows what problems you'll have with applications so if you have any older applications 13th gen is your cutoff and i'm sure somebody else could Give me more details on that. Throw a comment down below and let me know the difference on the 13th, 14th gen and what you guys think will happen with the removal of the 16-bit application support. So with that said, I started to think, you know, maybe we got some security changes that took place in the operating system. Maybe we will see things that are running in, say, Task Scheduler. So if we launch computer management here and we jump into task scheduler, I thought for sure maybe we would have something in here, but we don't. We have an update service that's in here that runs an update for the actual Media Player Classic. So there's really no additional triggers in here for any configurations of any kind. It's basically an out-of-the-box Windows 11 system with some functionality added to it to support the 7th and 6th gen processor. And the reason why I say it that way, specifically 7th and 6th gen, is because I really feel that if you try to run this on a 5th and older, I don't know that you'll be able to even boot. Uh, the 6th and 7th gen processor might work because they were designed for Windows 10. So typically, generally, you might have some success running it on a 6th or a 7th gen. And if you have an i9, then probably be okay. But if you have an i3 or an i5, it, it's just not going to work. I wouldn't even waste your time installing it. So that leads to the final question is, what is the purpose of this operating system? I can't imagine the developer would put in all that time and energy to do the configuration to mod the operating system. So basically, it uses the installation requirements for Server 2022 versus Windows 11. Because again, they're both 10.0.2 kernels and based on what I could see in the operating system. That's what it looks like. It looks like it's a combination of Windows 11 and Server 2022 to create this operating system. Now, with that said, I, is the purpose of this just for that 7th gen processor? That seems like a lot of work for a 7th gen processor versus just say, telling somebody, hey, listen, it's going to take me 60 hours to write this operating system to do this. And... It'll cost you 75 bucks to go out and buy an 8th gen processor. I, I just don't see the point. It seems like an awful lot of work for no real reason. So that leads us to the final portion of this, which is the security side. And with that said, the configuration on our Windows 11 system, box dock, out of the box, should be 39 infos and one medium. Now, on our particular system, I have the one medium patched with the SMB patch for security on my internal infrastructure. So when we scan it, we see 40 infos. Now, on a bog stop Windows 11 system, we should see 39 infos in one medium. And I'm betting that this particular operating system will show exactly what it is as far as a stock Windows 11 system. Because I don't see any difference between this system and just your out-of-the-box Windows 11 system from a functionality standpoint. Now, keep in mind, I'm not putting the operating system down, right? Because that's something that you would want to see as somebody in the security field is you would want to see if you have a homebrew system, you would want to see better security or the same. You don't want to see worse. So in Windows XP, when we ran the integral scan against the Windows XP system, when we discovered that the system didn't have the WannaCry patch on it, that's worse. So in reality, I'm hoping that this particular operating system, especially since this is version, I believe, 23H2, yeah, so it's Windows 11, 23H2. I have a feeling since it's 23H2, we should see this uh, operating system as 39 infos and one medium. So let's run those scans. Let's take a look. And again, leave some stuff in the comments. Let me know what your take is on this. Do you see a point in this operating system? I, I, I guess 
for trial purposes to see how much weight you could put on your older system before it doesn't boot. Maybe that would be interesting, but otherwise I, I don't really see a purpose. What do you guys think? Okay guys, so what we're looking at here is a bone stock Windows 11 system. So this is our test system that we built that was Windows 11 with all the updates. We ran the scan, we had 39 infos in one medium and we patched the SMB signature issue with that script. Now, if you didn't check out that video, I'll put that link to that video in the description, but ultimately this is what we'll see, which is 40 infos. This is what we would expect to see from a system with the SMB patch, as well as all of the other patches applied to a 23H2 system out of the box. Okay, so now we're looking at the scan from the Integral 11 system. Now this particular scan shows us that we have 39 infos and we have one medium. And that one medium is our SMB configuration that's missing the patch, which is the registry fix to fix the SMB flaw. So that's really something that would need to be done from a security perspective on the release of the operating system and the install of the operating system. It's not something that I would expect in the package, to be honest with you, but um, it is something that should be done after the installation of the operating system. So that means that this particular operating system is a bone stock Windows 11 system. There's no changes. In other words, the security comes back exactly the same as what we would see as an out of the box Windows 11 system. So at this point, I just don't know that I see a point in the operating system. And it's not that there's anything wrong with it, right? We know that it's secure as Windows 11 is. Um, we know that it has all of the same bugs and funkiness that Windows 11 has out of the box. We know that it has the same UI, the same uh, menu system, the same bloat that Windows 11 has. But the question that we have is, was it worth the development time to spend all of that time to develop a product that's really only usable on maybe two generations of processors and absolutely maybe just one version of one generation of processor? Because again, it's, it's gonna be real slow if you install this operating system on anything older. It's just not designed to run on that. And as a result, with that and all the bloat, with nothing actually trimmed out of it, I don't really see a purpose of it. Like I would never use this for an eighth gen or newer because it doesn't give me any benefit over running the vanilla version of Windows 11. If anything, it removes some of the security features that would be nice to have in your 13th gen processor. So you guys, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you could see a purpose for this, if there's a point to running it. Thanks again for watching.